This is a recording of a presentation I gave at the Photo Booth Expo in 2022. It's called Pricing and Package Strategies. So my name is Judd Lillistrand. I'm one of the co-founders of Check Cherry, and we do booking and client management software at Check Cherry. So on with the show. Um, pricing and package strategies. So first up, uh, a warning. So the concepts in this presentation are simplified. And I'm doing that for good reason. I have a goal, and my goal is to give you one solid takeaway. We all have different personalities and perspectives as entrepreneurs, and I just think it's really helpful to hear other things and then whatever you can get out of a presentation like this, if you can find one solid thing and then make your business better, that's a great thing. So the first thing I want to cover is this idea of price point. So I'm going to draw a graph. Uh, don't worry. Um, this is a demand curve. Uh, so generally what this is saying is that at a, let's say, $5 sign price, there are fewer customers, maybe 10 in this example. So let's say this is a, you know, my market for my service, something like that. Um, you know, there's 10 customers that are willing to pay $5 signs. Um, on the other hand, or the other side of the demand curve, let's say I lowered it to $1 sign, there's going to be a lot more customers. Maybe in this example, 1,000. Again, greatly simplified, uh, just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to break this presentation up into three different uh, categories of price point strategies, low, middle, and high. Again, oversimplified, but I think it's still helpful. So if you're operating on a low price point strategy, probably down here, middle price point strategy would be here, and then the high price point strategy would be up here. Okay, so there's a demand curve for everything. This is important to know. So for example, new cars, hotel rooms, and if you narrow the addressable market for a demand curve, it tends to offer more insights and, and is more helpful. So for example, airline tickets, really general. Airline tickets to Las Vegas. Okay, we're getting better. Airline tickets to Vegas from Bismarck, North Dakota. Right, pretty specific. Um, you might even say, you know, on a weekend or weekday or something of that nature. And it's really gonna give you an idea of where the demand is and what price you might be able to charge. So in our photo booth rental example, very general, you know, maybe it's wedding photo booth rentals and then more specific wedding photo booth rentals, Seattle, you get the idea. So demand curves also change over time. And so let's say, for example, I'm selling a, a mirror photo booth rental. And at one point I was able to charge $5 signs and there was you know, great demand and that was working for me, but then the demand curve shifts. And now I can't quite charge that rate uh, for whatever reason, maybe there's more people in the market, maybe people are interested in something new and great, um, whatever it may be, it just changes and uh, that can happen. Demand curves can shift over time. Uh, just a tip, I, I really found that one, I, I think it's smart to have fun in business. And uh, one of the ways that I found that's helpful is just to kind of understand the game, enjoy the process, and just understand the dynamics that are happening um, and just you know, play the game and have fun with it. In this presentation, I'm also going to cover two different but heavily related strategies. There's the price point strategy and then a pricing strategy. And so the price point strategy is when you choose where you choose to fall in the comparison to others. So I can't be low price point if everybody is charging or if I'm charging the exact same rate as everybody in the market uh, that I serve. Uh, the Pricing strategy is how you determine your prices and also how you position your prices. And we'll cover that later, but I kind of colored these uh, purple and pink and, and you'll see that later. So first up, the low price point strategy. And you'll see people get upset or scared about, hey, I can't make money. It's too low. How can they operate at that low price? They're undercutting the market. You'll, you'll see people upset at that type of thing. But the low price point strategy would show up down here. And it is a valid strategy. Um, I have seen a uh, you know, number of businesses in various industries operate as low, at low price point successfully. Um, Amazon.com comes to mind. Um, there are some benefits, right? So you're going to have more potential customers. 
it's going to be easier to make sales, right? Because you're charging less, there's more customers, um, all things equal, you know, if they're comparing two providers and your price is, is better, uh, chances are it's going to be easier for you to make the sale. It can also be helpful for getting a foothold in an industry and it allows for cross-selling and upselling. So if you're good at doing that type of stuff, this could be a good strategy. And it may be helpful in expanding market share. And I'll cover that uh, in a later slide. So low price point is also very challenging, right? So obviously there's lower margins and that's gonna have a negative impact on several areas of the business. One is less time per customer. So presumably you're able to, you're not able to provide the same level of customer experience. You'll also have less money for advertising, website, that type of stuff. Um, and you're gonna have less money for hiring. So keeping quality staff around is gonna be harder as well. And there's less margin for error. And what I mean by that is, um, let's say something doesn't go according to plan and you need to make something right with a customer. Um, you just got lower margin. So giving them a discount or a refund or something for free um, is really gonna impact your profitability quickly. So a pricing strategy, this is our first one here, is one of them is cost plus pricing. And so this is when the selling price is determined by adding a fixed percentage or an amount to your costs. And so an example of cost plus pricing, let's just, uh, again, oversimplified. I have $300 cost. That's obviously gonna be comprised of various things like insurance, employee cost, um, travel, whatever it may be. But let's say I have $300 uh, in cost, and I determine that, and then I want a 50% markup. Therefore, I'm at a $450 price point. And so somebody who's operating on the low end might try to push that percentage, that markup down, and also push their costs down. Keep in mind, costs can vary greatly between service and the company who's offering it. So really focus on yourself. Um, think about uh, somebody who's operating a photo booth business full time and has things like retirement and um, health care to worry about. Meanwhile, um, there could be somebody who's operating part-time and has a full-time job at the post office, which covers their health care and, and retirement. Uh, their cost structures are just going to be very different. They're going to think differently about cost. Penetration pricing is another pricing strategy. Uh, this is when a new entrant offers pricing that is much lower than the competition. And so you'll see this when somebody's new to the business, they might come in and operate um, in a way that is probably unprofitable and they're doing it because they need uh, traction, right? Maybe they want to get some marketing material out of it. Maybe they think that they can get leads from working some events. And so they're less worried about profitability and they're more worried about just getting the gears in motion, so to speak. Also, uh, if someone's selling this same or exact service as you for a lot less, you should be worried. Um, you need to have an answer uh, for this type of thing. And whether it be, hey, look, they're operating in a way that's you know um, new and they're not profitable and I'm experienced and I operate profitably, like I can't offer a rate at that. I just wouldn't be able to, to make money and they're new and less experienced. Um, you know, that may be one reason. Um, but if somebody's doing it for a lot less and, and the customer's perceiving it as the exact same service, um, you know, you should be worried. You need to have an answer for that. Don't just um, blame the other service provider, so to speak. The customer is not going to care about that. Let's talk about the high price point strategy, right? This is where everybody wants to be, uh, or maybe not, as we'll find out. But this is where you're operating on the highest price point strategy of the demand curve. And this is also a valid strategy. You are not gouging customers or overcharging. Um, you're going to have higher margins. And that's going to be good because you're going to have more time per client. So presumably you can provide a better service. Um, you can also develop custom solutions, right? And there's also a certain amount of prestige or a, uh, what I'll say is a prestige price point where people are looking to pay more for safety. Um, and, you know, it's basically, I guess an example would be, I uh, was shopping for a baseball glove for my son and I want to say there was a $15 option, a $25 option, and a $35 option. 
and not knowing much about baseball gloves and being in a rush, I just went for the $35 option. I figured it's going to be a better, safer bet. And it was only $20 more than the cheapest option. And so I wasn't price sensitive on that. And I just went for security and safety. I'll pay 20 extra bucks, assuming that it's better. Now, whether it is or not, that's a that's another matter. But I just didn't have the time to fully evaluate. So high price point also has its challenges. So one is there's fewer customers. We saw that in the demand curve. Um, there are going to be less potential customers. Your sales cycle is probably going to be longer. You might also end up in a situation where you're redlining contracts and you're working with corporate clients who really need um, some specific language, that type of thing. Maybe you need to have um, your counsel review their contract. Um, you're also going to have experienced competition. So that's a downside. Um, so people that tend to operate in the high price point um, have experience and are good at offering complex services. And you know, providing those complex services is going to take time and effort to complete and do well. Overall, I think that this is a less scalable uh, price point strategy. And what I mean by that is obviously there's fewer customers, but also um, there's going to be fewer people you can hire to do those complex services, for example, and provide that high level of service. It's going to be harder to, to find those people and keep those people. Another price strategy we see, and this is this can be on the high end, uh, also happens with when you're, you know, have a new service to a market is price skimming. And this is basically you're trying to set the price as high as the market will tolerate, and then you lower it over time. And an example I can think of of how you might kind of figure out uh, what your price is if you're doing price skimming is, let's say I get a lead for my new hot service and I throw out $9,000 and they don't bite. Uh, it doesn't work out. Okay, well, hey, we know it's worth it, so we'll go our separate ways. Lead two comes in and I think, you know what, we need something to, we need some action. Maybe we went too high. Let's try 4,000. Yep. And they bite. Okay, great. Lead three comes in and I say, okay, 6,000. Let's see what happens on this, this next deal or lead. And they don't bite. And then maybe the fourth lead comes in or maybe I even offer that person a $500 discount, right? And they, they do bite. And so over time, I'm again, oversimplified example, but over time, you basically find out what the market will pay. Value-based pricing is another popular pricing strategy. This is when you set your prices according to what consumers think your service is worth. And an example of this would be um, maybe a client is expected to get 500 leads from your uh, service. They usually spend $40 per lead. So 500 times 40, that's $20,000. So that gives you an anchor of where to start. Say, hey, look, the service I'm providing you is worth $20,000. And so you'd probably come in under that. Um, but the idea being that it gives you something that you can go to the client with in terms of, hey, this is the value I'm providing you. Another example of value-based pricing is uh, my sister paid $2 signs for a photo booth at, at, at her wedding. And so, you know, I'm going into the market looking to pay the same. So I think a photo booth is at a wedding is worth $2 signs. And, um, you know, if you have that price point, uh, ready for them, you're more likely to close a sale. If you're really off, you know, much more than that, it's going to be a lot more difficult. At least it's in the middle price point strategy where I think a lot of people uh, end up falling and for good reason. Um, the middle price point, you'd fall in here and it's a valid business strategy, uh, very popular. Um, there's obviously a larger market than the higher price point, uh, a more desirable price than the lower price point. And I would say it's more balanced and this is a good thing and it's proven, right? So back to the person who expected to pay $2 signs, you know, they come back out. Maybe they found somebody in the middle, they come back out and, and uh, you're ready to, to close a sale with them. It's also challenging. So it's going to be harder to stand out, right? And it's going to be less profitable than the high end side. Um, and your competition is going to be fierce. You're going to have a lot of people that are in the middle. Um, it's just, you know, and then, hey, what, what makes you different, so to speak? Competitive pricing is another pricing strategy. And this is when people set their pricing based on what the competition is charging. So let's say, uh, you know, I know that Tom across the street is charging $2 signs. And I say, you know what, we're better than Tom. And we're going to charge a minimum of two and a half dollar signs, for example. Uh, you might also come in and undercut them, right? You might say, hey, Tom's doing $2 signs. 
you know, we're a little newer, we want to be aggressive, let's go one and a half dollar signs. And you're basically using your competition's pricing to set your prices. So it's really important to position your business to capture more demand. It's going to make the sales process easier. It's going to allow your business to grow uh, over time. And we also see people migrate between price point strategies. So, you know, you might start on the lower end. Maybe you're new. Uh, you're using penetration pricing, whatever it may be. And over time, you realize it's not profitable. And then you kind of move towards the middle. You might also start in the middle um, and say, you know what, really, we want to be on the higher end. Uh, that's really better for us. We like complex custom solutions. You know, that's going to be better. And you can earn more by understanding the differences in demand. Um, and this is really important. So let's just imagine here's uh, my demand curve for my usual demand for my service. And for whatever reason, I can't seem to get people to pay more than $3 signs uh, for the service. But something then happens, right? So there's nobody here. Hey, it's New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve weekend, now all of a sudden the demand curve has changed and I can charge people more than $3 signs. So another pricing strategy is called dynamic pricing. This is when you set your prices to match the demand for services. And so customers have told us that they do things like, hey, I charge 3x my normal prices for New Year's Eve weekend bookings. They might say, um, I offer a 20% weekday discount, very common. Uh, another one would be, my kids' party packages are cheaper, but they must end by 4 p.m. And that's going to, the reason is that's going to give me the opportunity to provide a evening service at a higher price point. So I'm kind of doing uh, two bookings in a day in that example. And we developed a feature at Chuck Cherry called Flex Pricing to accommodate this. Um, if you're not doing dynamic pricing, I highly recommend looking into it. Um, we've made it so it's automatic, and then you can also use it with online booking. Also works with the proposals, uh, but very popular and a great way to capture more uh, of that uh, untapped demand, so to speak. So you can also use more than one price point strategy to get more demand. Um, multiple brands is something we see customers doing. So let's say I have a primary brand. And that's uh, in the middle of the market. I'm happy, you know, with that. And I get this idea that, hey, you know what? I think we can create something uh, higher end uh, and get more per booking for, for, for a similar service, right? Um, but we need to position it right. It needs to be a high-end wedding brand. And I think that my market can, can uh, accommodate that. And I don't need the volume on this second brand. Uh, necessarily because I have my primary brand, I'm really using it to uh, augment um, and capture more of the demand curve. So uh, multiple brands is a valid strategy. Uh, you can capture more demand with it. You can specialize in a niche. Um, you can offer specialized branding, right? That's gonna help with conversion rates, that type of thing. Um, and you can avoid self cannibalization. So. If you've got a, a large gap between your top package and you know the, all your other packages, it's gonna be really unlikely that somebody's gonna pay two, three X um, those rates, whereas a separate brand, they're not gonna necessarily be aware of those other packages. So multiple brands is also challenging. Um, so it's gonna be more work overall. You're gonna have to run multiple websites. You're gonna have more cost, you know, diluted efforts. So I have to worry about SEO now for two entities. I've got to review, worry about the review count for two different businesses, that type of thing. And I think as entrepreneurs, um, we're already doing a lot of switching gears and this is just another gear that we're gonna to have to switch. So at Check Cherry, we see people use brands for things like a uh, different service. So I have a brand for photo booth, a, a brand for photography, right? And maybe I don't want, uh, I want, when I'm out at events, I want people to recommend my photo booth business. And so I can work with photographers and they don't feel like I'm going to try to steal their business. I've seen that um, niche event brands. So Kinsey's, Mitzvah's, that type of thing, um, where you can really target in a popular uh, event type for your market and have something just really custom for them. Uh, brands for different price points, I just covered that with kind of having a higher end uh, wedding brand, for example, that would be a, I guess, a combination. 
So let's say your current strategy is you have one brand um, and you're capturing this much with your pricing, you know, whatever it may be of the demand. You can expand that and maximize coverage with one brand. And the way to do that is you can use packages. So we love packages at Check Cherry. Um, our system's really built around the concept of packages. That being said, we also understand that packages are not for everyone. And um, there might be like, for example, if you're doing price skimming, you know, you're not going to want to put packages out there in all likelihood. Uh, you're probably going to want to just have quotes come in and then kind of feel it out and put different pricing out, that type of thing. You might also offer a really complex service, which um, you don't know what you're going to offer the client. The client doesn't know what they want and you just can't package it up. That being said, if you can package your services, there's some real benefits. And I'm going to cover them right now. Anytime I think of you know, benefits, I always start with the buyer. I like thinking of the buyer benefits because if it's easier for buyers, if buyers like it, it's just going to make the sales process better and easier. So packages make buying easier. If I go to somebody's website, I see option one, option two, option three, like I'm already, you know, in a good spot where I can see descriptions and what's the difference, probably pricing. So it's easier to compare the options. Furthermore, I'm comparing options within one provider as opposed to comparing options between two different provider providers, for example. Um, it's gonna be easier to evaluate with those package descriptions, what's included, that type of thing. The prospect's gonna be able to answer like, can I afford this? You know, what's included? Is this for me? Like we all wanna know that we're buying how much is it options will give buyers a feeling of being in control this is really important it's going to make the sales process smoother we don't like to be sold but we all like to buy type thinking and um, it's just a good dynamic to give people options and a feeling of being in control when they're buying packages really make it easier to get started too let's imagine two companies i've got my company and I've got option one, option two, option three packages. And then we've got Matt's company. And I click the book now button on Matt's website and it goes to a contact form, for example. Um, who are we further along in the buying process with, right? Um, I'm gonna argue, it's pretty clear, that we're further along in the process of my company because you've already seen my packages and likely my pricing. And we know that the further you can get people in the sales process and just keep on moving them along your sales funnel, the more likely they are to close. Um, so there are some real seller benefits to offering packages as well. So back to my company, um, transparency equals trust, right? So I think it's really going to be uh, beneficial that when somebody comes and enters my sales funnel, that they're basically going to already have more trust in, in me and my company. I can do things like offer online booking. That's something Check Cherry offers. A lot of our customers offer online booking. It's a great way to collect high quality leads, uh, makes it convenient for customers, that type of thing. You can get better leads, right? Because people are gonna be able to evaluate whether or not something is for them when they're looking at your packages and pricing. Um, you can take a client-centric approach and customers are gonna notice that. And we all like doing business with customers or sorry, with companies um, who are, you know, customer centric and focus on a good customer experience. And I think this is this is a way to start right out of the gate, letting them know that you're client centric. So packages are a great place to start when selling. And here I've got my packages, uh, my base rate, most value, highest price. However, there is no need to let packages limit you. And what I mean by that is, let's say somebody comes and they see your options and they say, hey, you know what, I, I like this package, but can you add a couple of things? And you create a custom package for them. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's good to customize based on needs. Um, we've put a lot of work into Check Cherry to allow uh, package information and booking details, proposal details to be overwritten and modified to accommodate customer needs. Packages also allow customers to self-identify. What I mean by that is, let's say I have my three packages and somebody selects my highest package and then they become a lead. 
I already have insights as to what kind of budget they have, their expectations, their preferences. Perhaps this is a lead that I would spend more time following up than another package. Um, setting expectations is also easier with packages. So you've got your uh, descriptions, right? And you can say, hey, look, Mr. Customer, uh, we don't offer that at our base rate, but if you go with the most value package, you can get that. Um, very helpful. Uh, delivering on promises is easier. Again, descriptions, you're clearly saying what's included, what's not. When you have structure to your offering, it allows you to tweak um, things like what's included or price and see how customers react. So very, very helpful. Uh, a price strategy, I would say it's price anchoring. This is basically when you set your prices to make one package seem more attractive when compared to others. And you can do this with packages. This is a very common strategy. We've all seen this. I've got my base rate, $2 signs. Hey, for just one more dollar sign, you get a lot more value in my most value package. And then I might have a highest price point or a luxury package that's $5 signs. And that's gonna make that most value package look more affordable, basically. And so the, the base and the highest packages play off each other to make that most value package look like the one to go for. Trading staff and scaling is easier when you offer packages. Um, you know, everybody knows what's included, what's going on. Um, it's clear and just really, really helpful in delivering on your services. So you can leverage online booking uh, sales funnels when you offer packages. Uh, again, this is something we offer at Check Cherry, uh, very popular. And it's often best to craft packages that are designed for popular or specific customer profiles. And so an example of this would be, let's say I have a photo booth service and then I have a parties package group, right? Everything's a party, right? Um, and you might start out like this. You say, I have my base package, I have a value package, and then I have my premium package. Um, but then over time you say, you know what? Um, we've got those packages, but I need to create not a separate brand. I'm gonna create a separate group of packages for weddings. And so I have a base package, a value package, and a premium package. And then my weddings packages will be um, geared and tailored for that customer profile, both with images, but also with things like, I've heard people that don't want to you know, do short amounts of times at weddings. They have a minimum that's higher than their other packages, such that they're not breaking up or setting up and breaking down uh, during uh, the wedding, so to speak. And at Check Cherry, we've done a lot of work with our package manager to accommodate this type of structure. It's very popular, it works really well. Common question I hear and see uh, is, should I show my prices online, right? And um, I'm gonna say this is a pricing strategy. So again, um, it is a valid strategy. Uh, you're not leaving money on the table by showing prices online necessarily. Um, transparency equals trust. Let's go back to that. So your sales process, the haggling, you probably have less haggling if you show prices online. You're really showing yourself to be client centric and easy to do business with. You're going to get better leads. And that means what I'll say is basically less price fishing, right? So people already understand your offering, you know, when they've seen your packages ahead of time. Um, there are challenges and downsides to showing prices online. Um, one of them is less flexibility. So if you need a lot of flexibility in how you're uh, quoting out your services, um, probably not a fit. If you're doing a lot of custom specific you know, work, um, probably not a fit. Um, you're, you're going to get fewer leads. And I'm going to argue this is not a bad thing because most of the fewer leads are people that um, couldn't afford your services or your base rate. That being said, there are entrepreneurs who are really great at phone sales and they say, look, I mean, I, I need, I want to get more leads because then I can play to my strength of getting them on the phone and closing them, for example. Um, and I also hear people say, hey, I have less opportunity to sell. And if you fall into this camp, I would suggest that you really evaluate how well your website is selling for you because most people aren't going to fill out a contact form uh, to become a lead. Right? They're not going to reach out. They're just going to visit the website. That's where most people are going to do. And so really focus on that website and help that web and make sure that that website is selling effectively. Another uh, fear I, I would say I hear is uh, I don't want my competition to know 
about my pricing. And it's very common. And um, I'll just say that I think that you should make decisions uh, based on creating a better experience for your customers and not based on your competition. It's going to be very easy for your competition to find out your pricing. It'll probably end up wasting your time with fake leads, that type of stuff. Um, but it's not a good reason not to show pricing, I would argue. Again, my name is Judd Lillistrand and one of the co-founders of Check Cherry. And we do booking and client management software. If you sell with packages and add-ons, we think you're going to love what we're building and what we offer. Uh, we love photo booths. We have specific features for photo booth service providers, um, backdrop support, double-sided backdrop inventory, photo booth templates or overlays. Um, if you do photo booth and other services, we also have uh, tools for you. So a lot of our customers do photo booth and other things such as DJ, photography, um, maybe even just event services in general. Um, really popular uh, in photo booth and with photo booth features as well. So we also love the photo booth expo. Um, it tends to be every February uh, lately, but um, I would highly recommend going to Las Vegas and, and it's a great, great trade show, uh, really run well. And the floor show is just amazing. A lot of fun, good people. Um, we have fun every year. And so huge thanks to Photo Booth Expo for allowing me to give this presentation. And uh, we look forward to going every year. So thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye for now.